On the 17th day of October, Halloween gave to me 17 Eternal Lonelinesses, 16 Cursed VHS Tapes, 15 Spectral Snapshots, 14 Mothers Murdering, 13 Prices Bleeding, 12 Models Dying, 11 Bettys Baking, 10 Prices Burning, 9 Seagulls Pecking, 8 Scientists Sneaking, 7 Goldwyn Shooting, 6 Psychic Scamming, 5 Naked Witches, 4 Alien Spelunking, 3 UFO Abductions, 2 Deputy So-and-Sos, and a masked hawk being creepy. Welcome back to the 31 days of Halloween. And boy, that intro gets longer every day, doesn't it? Uh, it is getting more and more difficult to say. Uh, we are doing today uh, yet another in our mini-series of Asian horror films, and we are talking about Kiyoshi Kurosawa's Pulse, which is one of my all-time favorite horror movies. And it's a delight to talk to you about it and, and share my enthusiasm and love for it. Uh, it is of the same stripe in many ways as something like Ringu, which we talked about yesterday. And the, the thing that makes Pulse similar to Ringu is that both are kind of talking about the influence of technology on uh, people's relationships with one another. But Pulse comes at it much more directly than Ringu. Ringu is also sort of about the family unit and, um, you know, the idea of, of technology being a medium through which the supernatural can uh, conduct itself. And Pulse takes all of that and ratchets it up. And so here's the basic story of Pulse. Is you have kind of a, a disparate group of, of people, a couple of different storylines going on that will uh, come together at the end. But the idea is that this is sort of the early days of the internet. You know, people first getting online. And there is a, a website called the, the Forbidden Room. And in addition to seeing just generally creepy things on the internet, if you go to this website, then you're, you're sort of uh, invited to see a ghost. And once you do that, it seems to drain you of all will to live and any hope or optimism about the future. And as, you know, the, as, as things progress in the film, um, you start to realize that, oh, ghosts, in fact, are haunting the internet. But the reason that they give is kind of that no more room in hell reason for uh, uh, from Dawn of the Dead. And the idea proposed, and again, none of this is set in stone. It's, it's sort of the, uh, the theory made by one of uh, the uh, characters in the movie. And probably as close to the real thing as Kurosawa is going to offer the viewer. But the idea is that like, Hey, if, <laughs> if everyone who dies has a soul, eventually wherever it is that these souls go has to fill up and it may take billions or trillions of souls, but eventually you're going to hit that cap. And then where do they go? And so what is proposed in pulse is that with the invention of the internet, this sort of cyberspace is the outlet for the overflow of ghosts. And because they are starting to spread through the internet and people are seeing all of this stuff, they begin to not just haunt people, but really devastate society. You know, it, it, this is an apocalypse movie where the ghosts become so prevalent and their effect on people is, like I said, it's to kind of drain them of, hope, of all hope. And they just sort of disappear. They just kind of fade away. And, uh, you know, not even quite become ghosts of their own. They just, you know, leave these moldy stains on the wall. And then they're just gone. And, you know, some people will uh, go out of their way to kill themselves to sort of get to this ghost place. And it's really harrowing kind of stuff. And 
the ghosts, the way that they move is really eerie. Uh, it, it's uh, the trick of filming someone moving backwards and then playing it forwards or, you know, reverse of that playing, playing it forwards when someone moves backwards and uh, creates this real herky jerky kind of movement as well as this weird, almost dancing kind of movement from some of them. Uh, that's really unsettling because they just don't behave like you, like people do. Right. I mean, that's the whole, <laughs> that's the whole thing is they're not people, they're ghosts, they're dead folks. And they, th their existence is really foreign to the living, but coming into contact with them is definitely deadly. It, it, it does something to your psyche. And, uh, it, there's almost a Lovecraftian vibe to it to some extent that, uh, you know, th these are things that you are not supposed to know. It, they are beyond your kin, and coming face to face with it is is psychologically and and spiritually devastating, and something that you just shouldn't truck in uh, by any stretch. And so that's really horrifying. And as the movie goes on, like suddenly, whole towns, like the cities, are just empty you know, and fires are burning in the distance and stuff because as the ghosts permeate, you know, the technology more and more and start to manifest themselves more and more into the real world, that it becomes a situation where like everybody's just gone. Everybody's either dead or disappeared or, or, uh, you know, the whole place is just haunted and it's really, really scary. But the thing that's more terrifying then that premise, which I do think is, is, is eerie. And it, it, like, it's the ghost story as apocalypse story. And I like that a lot. I, I like that combination of, you know, Hey, if ghosts get loose, um, they're not loud and brash and they're not, you know, swooping around. Like it's not the Zack Snyder or Michael Bay or Rennie Harlan, uh, to use, you know, that old haunting version. Uh, haunting remake version of this kind of story. They're not bombastic. It's just, you know, societally devastating. And that's really unsettling to me. But, uh, so let's get to the, the, the depth of this thing, which is one of the things I, I really like about it is that it is a movie that is very much about something. And it is Kiyoshi Kurosawa looking at the internet as a thing that enhances loneliness as opposed to brings us together. And again, much like when we talked about the ring, there is an eerie prescience to this because there is a notion, uh, especially in the early days of the internet, which I'm old enough to remember when the internet was not a thing. And then suddenly it was, and the idea was this is going to bring everybody together. And some of that has borne out there. There is some truth to that, but then you start to look at how it has also distanced us and divided us as people have manipulated the internet. And you know, th there's a, a, a psychological study I was just reading the other day that said that essentially anyone who uses social media has a higher rate of depression than people who do not use social media. Doesn't matter what form of social media, doesn't matter what platform, if you use it at all, you are less happy than if you don't use it. And that I think says all you need to know about what the internet has done to us. It's made us more anxious. It's made us uh, like crave attention in some ways. And you know, I, and I say that knowing full well, the irony of like, this is a, a podcast that is released on the internet. Um, and you know, the internet is essential and the internet is wonderful. It does bring communities of people together. It, it has given voice to marginalized people. It has helped people who, you know, are li live out of the norm. Uh, it, it has given them a way to, uh, find others like themselves and, and people that can relate to their, you know, personal struggles, but it also at the same time gives rise to other segments of people that were marginalized before, like, you know, white supremacists who 
had to kind of keep it on the down low, but the internet uh, has created whole communities of people like that, you know? Um, you look at Reddit, and Reddit is this wonderful combination of things where you can look at a subreddit like I do, which is all about teachers trying to figure out behavior management skills and, uh, you know, commiserating with one another about low pay and here's how uh, you can kind of combat work stress and find the proper work-life balance and things like that. But you hop over to just another subreddit and it is all about, you know, the most hateful kinds of ideas imaginable. And so, you know, the internet giveth and taketh away in equal measure and the things that it taketh, I think, is uh, a lot of civility and a lot of uh, the, the idea that we are all engaged in a social contract of sorts. And the, the thing that Pulse gets at, uh, all of that matters to the, this discussion, I assure you. The thing that Pulse gets at is that we are essentially lonely and isolated people. And the internet was supposed to change that and it didn't. It only enhanced that isolation. It only made us feel uh, more alone. And I don't know that that's entirely true, but I think within the context of the story, that idea of thinking, you know, like reaching out for some kind of human contact. And there are themes throughout the the story about this, like the, the guy who owns uh, the gardening center where, uh, uh, you know, a couple of the main characters work. Um, he kind of sniffs out that the main uh, female protagonist there is into the guy who works there and, you know, tells her like, hey, it's kind of a wonderful thing. It's a really brave thing to let somebody know that you care about them because it, it, it exposes you. But it's also really wonderful because when that sentiment is returned, then you're not alone anymore. And... Similarly, uh, the, you know, the male protagonist of the film as well, um, has a, a lot of those same, uh, you know, Ryosuke, I think is his name. Um, and Michi is the, is the, the girl and Ryosuke, um, you know, kind of has the hots for Harue, uh, who is, uh, a, a teacher or an instructor at the, the, uh, computer lab. And they have conversations about loneliness. And the, the whole movie is just rife with these moments where there is very much uh, a, a running theme of that. That uh, this idea that we are all desperate for some kind of connection with others. But the problem is that, you know, we're a, a little timid about that. And... Um, and the internet comes along and, and sort of makes that all worse. And one of the characters, uh, Harue, uh, has this monologue about how she's thought about death ever since she was a child. And the thing that scares her is not that she'll die. It's that she'll carry this loneliness inside her into death. And that all death is, is an eternal loneliness. And that is something that seems to be true in the film. Like, like the ghosts are just sort of isolated and alone as well. And it starts to beg the question of like, well, what's the difference between us and the ghosts? And I think that's kind of the effect that they have on, on the living is that when you come face to face with them in, in close contact, uh, contact with these ghosts, that you begin to question whether or not living matters at all. And eventually you do just reach a point where you fade away into, you know, a stain against a wall and, and this, you know, floating ash. And it's really terrifying and, and, and really sad. And that's one of the things that I love most about Pulse is that it is eaten up with mood. Uh, it is a, a, dreary film and I don't mean that in in the sense that it's a, a dreary film to watch it's just a very somber piece of work and you know there are things about it that I find very scary there's the ghost in the arcade that I think is is really creepy um, but 
you know, it the the movie ends in a place where the whole moral of the story seems to be like sometimes even in the face of loneliness and desperation and hopelessness that you just keep pushing forward because that's what there is. Uh, that is all you can do. You know, we've all, I'm sure, had moments in our lives of intense grief and hopelessness and, and a feeling of being overwhelmed by, you know, the existential uh, uh, curse of living, of, of seeing people that we love die and, and leave us and feeling desperately alone at times and, and completely, um, you know, without friends or family that we can rely on. Uh, and and you, hopefully and usually, I think those feelings are are passing, and you try to build these relationships in your life that keep you from feeling that way any more than you have to. But we're just human, right? Like we're the great thing about being alive is that you have this wild range of emotions. There are, there's a lot of joy, but there's a lot of sorrow and grief and sadness too, and you feel that stuff as well. And the thing that is most terrifying about Pulse is to think that you're trapped in those, the worst feelings that you have for an eternity. And so the hope of the movie, the optimism of the movie is that you just rail against it, you know, uh, rage against the dying of the light as it were. Uh, but that's what makes the movie so horrifying is the idea of that kind of loneliness and desperation and sorrow spreading like a virus through the internet via these ghosts so that we all become those hopeless people that become so hopeless that we just disappear, that we just go away. And uh, whether that is, you know, Kurosawa's metaphor for death or for, for a, a sort of social death where we just no longer affect the people around us, um, there are certainly implications of... of what it's like to live in the wake of people committing suicide around you, because that does happen in the film as well. Um, you know, so it's this wonderful combination of being incredibly eerie and unsettling as a horror film, and also thematically existential in a way that really appeals to me. And it has a, a kind of a grim optimism to it that I relate to and I believe in. I mean, the movie is darker than my personality, to be sure. I'm, I'm a much more upbeat person than, <laughs> you know, the, the movie Pulse uh, is, is a far more dour uh, form of art than I would produce at this point in my life, I think. But it is poignant. And, and that's the thing, I, like every time I watch Pulse, I come away from it thinking that it's a better movie than I ever gave it credit for. And I give it a lot of credit these days, but even now when I go back, I'm like, oh, right, right. This is a wonderful exploration of uh, sort of the darkest moments that we all have. And, and perhaps in sharing even that, it, it brings us uh, closer together as, as a people. And... Um, that is the thing that's, that's the big lesson I think of pulse is that you, you have to, you have to find your solace in others, you know, that we are not an Island. Um, it's something that, uh, again, I, I feel like I've learned late in life, but I'm glad I've learned it and, and really do find such joy and, and happiness in the relationships I have with the people around me. So, uh, it, yeah, what a what a terrific movie! Oh my goodness, is Pulse good? So uh, I have waxed poetic about Pulse uh, long enough. If you've never seen it, you absolutely should. It is uh, an absolute all timer. This is you know like god tier, not just Japanese horror. This is like god tier horror films. And Kiyoshi Kurosawa also did Cure. I, I'm sure you've heard Duncan talk about Cure. If you haven't, you should because he loves that movie as well. Um, and Chris always still working. Like this is a, a great director that's still producing great stuff. He just recently did a movie called to the ends of the earth and a movie called before we vanish and a movie, uh, called creepy, uh, that I, I enjoyed. Uh, and so, yeah, it, it, a, a wonderful director. It's a, one of his best films, if not his best film. 
um, you know, done around the middle of his career, but boy, does it, it pack a serious punch. It's it, like I said, just one of the all timers. It's, it's grim. You're going to walk away from this, not feeling great about yourself. Uh, but I think that experiencing pulse is a way to remind us all that, you know, it, what's important is not just, you know, our own selfish happiness, but, uh, how we connect to other people. So, uh, I hope you have been able to connect, uh, he says, segueing to the end of the show, uh, with, with some of this stuff. And, uh, and if you do, then hop over to, uh, one of the social media channels. You can go to legionpodcasts.com and find, uh, this post on the website, uh, under the, uh, right on the front page, usually, uh, on the slider, but... Um, also under the dark parade show, if you go to the shows and then click on the dark parade, that'll take you to all of these posts and more. And, uh, yeah, under each of those posts, you'll find links to all the social media networks. Uh, I am active on the discord server. So if you're a discord user, or even if you're not a discord user, I recommend it because, uh, it's a little bit more intimate, I think, than most social media channels. It's just, Hey, we all have a server and we can all chit chat and, and talk about movies and whatnot. So, uh, usually Jason is in there talking about what lifetime movies that he's watching and, uh, what horrible, horrible horror films that he has seen most recently. Um, as well as some other conversation. That's always great courts in there and et cetera. So, uh, drop by, say hello. Let me know what you thought of pulse. Uh, let me know what you, what you think of all of these movies that we're doing on the 31 days of Halloween. Um, if you are subscribed to the Legion podcasts feed, and that is how you are hearing this, I would certainly invite you to, uh, and also check out the dark parade, which is the show I do on the weekly, except for this month of October, where you get one of these every single uh, day in October, uh, as well as some other stuff. Once I, uh, get back, uh, from my, my Halloween cruise, which, uh, as you're listening to this, I will be back in town and back in action. So I will be working on some new stuff. Uh, for um, the end of the month to celebrate Halloween. Uh, but anyway, subscribe to the Dark Parade and you'll get that and, and a bunch of other stuff. And if you're listening to this on the Dark Parade, then please be sure that you are also subscribing to the Legion Podcasts uh, feed where you can get all the other shows on Legion Podcasts like uh, Cinema Psyops and uh, I, what, what, do, what do I leave out? Podcast on Haunted Hill. I'm trying to think of the more obscure ones. Butcher Shop, not obscure, but just ones I don't mention nearly as much. Uh, the Psychosemantic Podcast, um, uh, Friday Nightmares, and Kill the Cast, and uh, yeah, just a, a bunch of shows. And you're going to enjoy them all. I guarantee it. Uh, but, <laughs> so anyway, we've got some more Asian horror to do uh, before we move on to uh, our semifinal stretch of movies. But uh, I'm excited to talk to you about the, the next couple that are going to be a, a lot of fun to discuss. Thank you, as always, for listening to this. It is, uh, you know, midway point of October, so I hope you're enjoying yourself. We've got a couple more weeks to enjoy the spooky season. I hope you are, because I certainly am, uh, both in watching movies and uh, just uh, talking about horror movies. Oh my God, do I love talking about horror movies. And so thanks for listening in and until next time, I'll see you tomorrow for another edition of the 31 days of Halloween. See you then. Oh.